Hello and welcome to a Should You Buy for the Striker Booster Pack. Now, it's been a very long time since I have said such words in relation to MechWarrior Online, but there is actually new content to purchase. And I say new content loosely there because these are not new mechs. These are new variants for existing mechs. And as such, this is labeled not a mech pack, but a booster pack. Uh, I'm guessing they're trying to go for the feeling of like save for Magic the Gathering, where you would open a booster and maybe get a couple cards you want to use instead of, say, buying a pre-made deck or buying a large box whenever a new set comes out. That's the get, like the feeling that I'm getting from them. This is a, you know, once every quarter, it seems, uh, boost to, you know, hey, purchase this, something new. Here's a, a deal, essentially. But let's go over what is in this Striker Booster Pack. So first off, it is much cheaper, and there's only one option. So normally with the mech packs, they would go like $20, $20 standard, $40 special version that would get you the um, special variant with 30% C-Bill Boost, uh, with Collector's Edition. And then it would be like $15 for the hero, $15 for reinforcements. This is just $20 flat, you get everything in this. So we'll have to compare it essentially against what a, a standard mech pack would be like. We have two new variants, one for the Thunderbolt and one for the Dragon. It's called the Grand Dragon here because the DR, DRG1G was the Grand Dragon, but it's essentially just a variant of the Dragon. It's not actually a new mech. It is the Thunderbolt. 10SE, which is just a variation of the 9SE, and then the DRG1G, which is, it's very similar to the Flame in terms of its hard points. You get both a special variant with a custom pattern and a 30% SIBO boost, the S version here, as well as a standard version of the variant and mech bays to hold them. So in total, you are getting essentially two Seabull boosted hero mechs, and two standard variants, four mech base to hold them all for your $20. Which, by itself, if you like the variants and if you like the, the mechs, it's pretty decent to get to two 30% Seabull boosted mechs. But moving on to other items that are in the pack. We have some currencies. We got 8 million C bills and 200 GSP, which should be enough, realistically, as long as you're not trying to buy engines or something. If you have a spare engine, you can swap into these things. That should be enough to pay for your double heat sinks, your endo steels, use a couple weapons, and get these mechs outfitted for the battlefield, along with 200 GSP, so you know 100 each, or realistically, if you know the build you want to do, 91 points each so that you can get their skill tree done before you even have to uh, play them at all. So immediately, hopefully with all this currency here, it should be enough so that you just play the variants at their maximum capacity without having to do any grind. And I really enjoy having the GSP in the pack. I think that is a very good decision. Be able to say like, hey, pay, just enjoy the mechanics highest capacity, don't worry about the grind, which is what it should be when you're having a freemium option, the paying removes the grind. So it's good. Uh, otherwise, you know, cockpit items, I I don't really care much for the cockpit items, but they're there. A war horn, which whatever that sounds like, we don't know yet. Uh, some rather decals, titles, badges, you know, fun stuff. We also have an early adopter bonuses. And what's really interesting is that they're shipping on April. So January, February, March, April, May. The early adopter bonuses expire after it comes out, which is interesting, which makes me sort of have like this uh, thought that it's, you know, you know, it's a Q1 supporter. 
quarter one supporter. So this is, they're going to do like a, a new variant pack every quarter. At least that's what I'm pulling from this. And so then the early adopter bonuses for that quarter end at the end of the quarter. And then if you go into the next quarter, we'll have another two max in a pack. You know, both of these are inner sphere. So I'm guessing the next two will maybe be, a, um, be clan. And then you would have its early adopter bonuses last for that quarter. And if you wanted to get the previous one, you wouldn't get the, the bonuses for it. But anyway, that's why I'm thinking about the, I mean, this is going to be like their new um, mech pack thing, four per year little booster packs. But anyway, moving on to what you get if you purchase it before the 18th of May. You get exclusive bolt-ons for the special variants. So only be able to use on these variants here. We take a look at them. Uh, as you can see here, they're not, uh, art shown as an early sketch phase only, is not final, and it will be shown before the early adoption option expires. You'll be able to see what they actually look like in game. So we can see that the Thunderbolt just has some like added, almost looks like just like a blade of armor on it, just, you know, like a, like a helmet and a pauldron and a gauntlet and a little bit of back armor. And the dragon has got a cool helmet, a shoulder pad, and changing up its hand to be more like claw-like and some wings or little jet thrusters or whatever the hell they are on its back. So, you know, exclusive bolt-ons. And with the what they were saying, how they're going to make it so that bolt-ons are permanently on and not shot off, you can actually have some customization of your mech that you know, sticks around past three seconds into combat when somebody rakes an ER large laser across you and all your bolt-ons jump off. So that's good. As well, an additional 200, 200 GSP. So that's not only leveling up your special variants, but that's also the regular variant as well. Or if you're like me, just, just keeping the uh, special variant, you sell off the normal variant because unless it's like a really good mech that you want to take doubles into, you know, your dropship, why have doubles of a, a variant? That's just 200 GSP you can throw towards anything. Well, I have another mech that I have bought and I want to level it up, but I don't want to fight through having to, you know, play the mech without any bonuses. Hey, you know, if I purchase this, that mech is done already and I can just enjoy it at its highest capacity. So, I like, I like having the GSB in here as well as hanging items times two. So two of them with a 5% sealable boost. So similar to God, they had these in the civil war packs where they had little hanging items and cockpit items that had 5% XP and 5% seabill boosts. And then you could like change them around and do whatever you wanted there. So that's, you know, another way to get a little Seabill boost. If you put it into your special variant of this, you're getting a 35% increase instead of 30. And you probably can combine it with the mounted cockpit item from the Civil War and get, you know, 40% Seabill boost, which would be wonderful. But let's go on to the most important part is the mech specs. Now, since these, this isn't a new mech, I don't think I need to go through all of the breakdowns of how fast it will be at certain speeds and like how many tons will it have with whatever engine and you know, all that kind of stuff. Because, you know, these mechs exist in the game already. You can just go and grab a dragon in the client and click mech lab when you're in the store and just test it out as my phone beeps, because I'm a very professional YouTuber. But you don't need this extra information from me about all of the, you know, different tonnage you have available. Just go play within the mech lab. So I'm just going to go over the, the hard points of these. For the Grand Dragon, the Dragon 1G, it's essentially a flame. So the flame has two energy in each arm and a single missile in the center torso, if I'm not, if I'm remembering that correctly. This Similar layout, except that we have one energy in each arm, one energy in each side torso, and two missile in the center torso. Now, the two missile in the center torso is kind of annoying because it's critical slot limited. We only have two slots there because the freaking engine is there. So how we can't really fully utilize the two slots unless we're going to do something like 
two SRM fours, two SRM twos, two streak twos, um, because streak fours are two slots if I'm not mistaken. God, it's been so long that I've since I played, I can't remember if streak fours are one or two slots. I think they're two, but. Or maybe like two LRM fives or a single LRM ten, and none of this with Artemis, because if you take Artemis, then it's just like a single two or a single four for SRMs in that center slot. It's kind of annoying to have that be so crit limited. It would have been much stronger and a better candidate uh, if the even just one of those missiles was moved to the side torsos, if not even both of them, because then. You could do things like actually have two SRM6s or actually do two LRMs or two MRMs and be like having fun with it. Now, for positioning of those hard points, we, of course, it's an existing chassis, so we know where they're going to be. We can take a look at the Grand Dragon here. We know that the side torso energy are going to be nice and high in the torso, so that's great if you want to have a peaking build. You can. Uh, Take, say, a pair of large PPCs and put them on those side torsos, and then you can just barely peek over a hill and then pump them down range. The arms are going to be a little bit lower, more down near the, the waist, and it's going to be a little bit of a knuckle dragger situation, which is kind of annoying. Um, but moving on to the Thunderbolt, the 10 SE, which is essentially a 9 SE. A little bit of difference here, though. It's got all the kit. Like, if if somebody asks you what could you put on a Thunderbolt, you would just say yes because it has it tends the jump jets, it has mass. Oh, sorry, it has ECM and it has mask. It has all of the kit here, all the special equipment, which is kind of nice. It's kind of an interesting thing. So you can make this thing stealthy, mobile, and fast, which. It's cool for a 65 tonner. Let's take a look at the hard points though. Left torso is going to be three energy and a single missile. Center torso is where you're going to find your UCM. And the right arm is going to be two energy. So back up to a picture here so we can take a look at that. So very similar, 9 SE. We've got the left torso here, which will be our three energy. They'll be just directly below the, co below the cockpit. So you do have to expose up to your hips in order to uh, fire those energy weapons on target. Although the missile is quite high, it's nicely above the cockpit here. As the on Thunderbolts, you're left leaning on your cockpit, you're looking out of your left side. And then on the right arm, there's going to be two energy, one off the side, one in the center, most likely. ECM center, and there wasn't anything right torso, right? Nah, just an AMS. So, if a build works on the 9SE, it'll work on this Mac. But you have to take into consideration that you're also going to lose some tonnage, the ECM and the mask, if you want to take them. But you don't have to if you don't want to. But let's look through a couple builds uh, for these and take a look. So they are on the MacDB, mech.nav slash dash alpha.com. So you can go and uh, experiment with them right now. Uh, the Dragon 1G. So we have the energy weapons across the mech. We have the two missile hard points in the CT. Because they're current limited, we're stuck to SRM4s, so I stuck them both in there. We got a light 300, which gets us up to 81 kilometers an hour, which is pretty fast. You know, it's a good number for a 60 tonner. But what are you going to do with four energy? We had more, we can go with a sort of like a medium pulse SRM. But since we don't have as many energy, we probably go for less but larger energy weapons. So I'm thinking like three large laser, that way you don't have any um, heat scale. And then two SRM4s for the close in extra punch when you eventually do have to brawl. So you've got the three large laser as your skirmishy, run around the battlefield, sort of poke over, shoot. And then when you actually do commit to the a brawl at the end of a match, you've got the uh, SRM8 essentially as your um, backup short range weapons. You know, you could probably cut a little bit of uh, ammo here, rearrange the armor as you wish, but pretty much fully maxed armored, got two and a half t tons of ammo for the SRM-8 in that sense, which gives you plenty of shots, plenty of ammo. You probably wouldn't even need to take ammo nodes, um, but you could easily, you know, take ammo nodes, 
that's a lot to cut but you could probably cut a half ton of armor off there maybe change this to light pharaoh instead and you could probably fit in a uh, an ams as long along with that if you wanted to moving on to another version for the dragon uh just abandon the missiles because they're so crit limited they're kind of annoying to deal with so just eh, fuck them we'll just go with like trip ppc or this is just a, a placeholder for whatever you want just a some quantity of large energy and this would be more play like a shoot and scoot pop them run pop them again sort of sniper you wouldn't really have the heat efficiency to go and sit in short range combat for a very long time unless you like fill this out with snub nose or whatever but you have a decent amount of speed to be able to just you know get up to a piece of cover pop out blast all three of them at once you'll take some heat scale but you should be able to shoot all three of them without overheating and then you know slink back into cover scoot to the next spot pop up shoot them all keep doing that that kind of play style uh next talking about the thunderbolt uh, this is just trying to use everything that it has every single hard point we got five year medium lasers and an mrm 40. it's not the most damaging design because of the spread of the mrm 40 how it just sort of goes everywhere on the mech instead of being able to choose like i want to hit just the left torso like you can with uh uh say artemis srms but we have jump jets we have ecm we have mask the mech is fairly mobile 74.7 and we have that mask to kick in when we need to so we can i don't know what the i can't remember the boost is for mask it'd probably get us up to like what 80 something just shy of 90 i can't remember the amount uh, the mask would do but i think it's like high 80s would be the mask boost after uh, 74.7. But then we have the ECM with it and we have the jump jets. So we can just play this almost like a medium in that feeling. It's got the same kind of firepower that a medium would. And so we can just get into some cover, get into say like a piece of low ground, behind a, a set of buildings or something move hard on the flank flank around somebody come out of nowhere because we have ecm and then just descend upon them with our medium lasers and our mrm 40 and just have a really high heat efficiency and just have some good dps in their face um it might function that way it's definitely not a mech that would want to be like the, the leading a push um, if you're going to do something that's more of like a brawly roll just get a powerhouse where it can just tank the enemy this thing won't be able to tank as well because of the hard points like the hitboxes of a thunderbolt um, but it's got a lot more mobility so it'll be able to skirmish a bit better than other mechs of its weight class then we have the same thing that i did on the other one just a bad of the missiles it's just one missile we would have liked to have another one but uh, whatever we can just abandon it and we can just go for lasers now i'm not sure what this i i don't know what meta is anymore i haven't played the game in long enough but like triple large doesn't heat doesn't hit heat scale we got an extra couple er mediums onto the end of it I mean, you could make those ER large. This could be a pretty good poke sniper from long range, a triple ER large and a mask and an ECM and jump jets. You could just be an annoying bastard at range. But if you're going to do that, there's probably better mechs, especially at the 65 ton range. You could just use a Hellbringer instead. Uh, but it would work. Uh, a lot of this stuff is going to be highly dependent on the quirks these things get because we have no information about the quirks yet um so we'll have to see but there's some options here i, I think the the thunderbolt has some potential to be a good toolbox being able to do a few different things if it needs to because if i need the jump jets and i need the mobility i can take them and i can do that but if i don't i'll just leave them behind and i'll 
bulk up on uh, heavier energy weapons or you know a bigger engine or whatever you want to do with the thunderbolt and then uh, the dragon it's not as flexible i'm not as a uh, psyched about the grand dragon design would have loved for it to have a missile somewhere else in the torso rather than the ct but yeah that's pretty much it it's really interesting to see uh, you've got actual you know stuff to purchase and there's actually stuff for me to talk about when it comes to mechori online that's nice i can actually make videos on this you know if, going off topic that's the end of the uh should you buy you know if you're looking for like just the, the end all deal of it i mean if you play the game this is this is a pretty decent deal you're getting two c bill boosted mechs you're getting the regular variants i don't really care about those but it could just be a free mech bay which is you know what is that 300 mc value for for each standard variant you decide to just toss in the dumpster as well as not having to level them and not having to level a couple of your other mechs as well that's kind of nice for twenty dollars so i mean if they really wanted to make this absolutely op throwing like some amount of premium dime but you know for twenty dollars this is already pretty decent of it is of a, a deal but moving on from just the should you buy version of this and more of my reflection of this is a there's actually something to talk about i can go and make when these eventually comes out i can make a video or two on each one so if there's actual something for me to do in the game there's something new there's content even though it is just new mechs and not even new mechs but new variants some people might not call that content but it, it's content enough that I can I can make my content on it. So, yeah. I'll get them. Eh, it's 20 bucks. Easy for me to throw it that way. Hope for the best. Hope that they'll improve the game over 2021. And uh, the real reason is I just have to poke a mech all the specials. If I don't get all the specials, I feel weird inside. <laughs> so that's the entire reason. But thank you for listening. Mech War Online content in 2021. What is this world coming to? That's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching. Good hunting out there, fellow mech warriors.